Hey guys, how's it going? It's Michaela, and today we are starting our trip at Koriyama Station in Fukushima Prefecture. We are about to board the Shinkansen to Yonezawa in Yamagata Prefecture. Yamagata Prefecture is known for having delicious rice, and by extension, delicious sake as well. So we stopped by Toko Brewery, Tohoku's largest sake brewing museum, to have a taste. Just one of these sake barrels can produce around 2,000 large bottles of sake. And there are currently 17 of the barrels here in this display. These particular barrels were used 100 years ago. So 100 years ago, they were already mass producing crazy amounts of sake using the technology that they had during that time. This tourist-friendly attraction explains everything you need to know about sake brewing. And at the end, you can look forward to tasting a variety of Toko Brewery's products. After taking a tour around the um, facilities and learning about all the hard work and the uh, dedication um, involved in making good sake, <laughs> I, I really feel like I appreciate good sake now. In the evening, we checked into a traditional Japanese inn called Goten Mori. With perks like welcome ramune, welcome sake, and welcome wine, this is a nice place to relax. There are 12 different public baths accessible on rotation, and the rooms are modern, stylish, and super cozy. <laughs> and the coffee makers and Keurig. Fancy. The rooms are nice, the baths are really great, and the kaiseki dinner is absolutely delicious. We had two different types of yonezawa beef that absolutely melted in your mouth. If you stay here, make sure you come on an empty stomach because this food is a lot. For a change of pace in the morning, we decided to stop by Waku Waku Kan for a yonezawa ori textile weaving activity. Japanese woven fabrics are made carefully with attention to detail, and throwing an activity like this into your itinerary really forces you to slow down and relax. Working on your woven fabric is like meditation. Plus, you can leave with a one-of-a-kind textile piece that you've made yourself. One of the best souvenirs you could possibly have. For lunch, we decided to stop by Kura Obihachi, which is a really cool restaurant operating inside a former brewery. The restaurant still serves alcohol and craft beer, but also generous portions of a hearty lunch. Trust me when I say you want to work up an appetite when you come to Tohoku, because it seems like everywhere we've gone so far, we've been fed. Alright guys, so now we're going to head up to Yamadera, which is, as the name suggests, a temple in the mountains. It looks absolutely gorgeous and picturesque from what I've seen. I haven't actually been up there yet. So we're going to just wait for uh, the kids on their school trip to head up first. And then we're going to go take a look and hopefully we're going to see some of those amazing views as well. Yamadera literally means mountain temple in Japanese, and the temple grounds extend high up a steep mountainside. But there are plenty of places along the way to stop and explore, so don't let that scare you from coming here. If you love the place you want to improve, it is believed he will answer your prayer. I usually uh, rub his head to have good brains. Good brains, okay. And face to stop aging. Ah. <laughs> Uh, I guess I will touch the child. I have a cute baby. So, and I hope she grows up big and strong. Mm, yes. Let's go inside. Okay. To get the most out of our climb, we hired English speaking guides, the Yamaderans, to help keep us motivated and educated during our big hike up the mountain. All right, here we go. We're going up almost a thousand steps. 
and hopefully by the time we get to the top, all my worldly desires will be extinguished and I will want absolutely nothing except maybe to sleep or eat. Do you, do you walk up here every day? No, not every day, but, but I've been here mm. like 50 times. 50 times? Yeah, even more. <laughs> uh, wow. So I can easily get to the summit. Oh, no. It's very beautiful though. It is. It's so peaceful and green. The ascent to the top of the mountain is about 1,000 steps, and it's definitely tricky in bad weather, but the views at the top of the mountain are absolutely worth it. I would love to come back and see this in the fall and winter as well. Ah, today is so beautiful. Yeah, really good weather. We were extremely lucky. Wow. Wow, okay. I'm tired, but the higher we go, the more excited I am because I see some really nice views up ahead. So the guide was telling me there's a post office, post box, all the way at the top of the mountain. And aside from Sunday, they come every single day. 11 a.m. on weekdays, 11 a.m. on Saturday. And they come all the way up here to collect the mail because there's still some people living up here in Yamadera. Can you imagine being the person in charge of climbing a thousand steps every morning to get the mail? The final push to the Hondera, the main temple, requires a little bit of energy, and I think this is where you end up leaving all your otherworldly desires, because at this point, I just simply wanted to make it to the top. I'm trying not to be loud. Once you've made it to the top of the mountain, the way down is so easy and you get to admire all of those views that were facing behind you while you made your way up. This hike definitely requires a little bit of energy, but trust me, it's worth it. From here, we left Yamagata Prefecture behind and entered Miyagi, where we started at the top of a mountain that still had snow on it. Even in the summer, the climate across northern Japan is varied and diverse, and it's something I really enjoy about this region. To see more about Miyagi Prefecture, make sure you watch the next video coming out soon. Alright. I love colorful things, so this donzu. <laughs>